Yeah, we're gonna show Pete all these different tractors. I think this will be very informative for you as well as Pete. If you know Pete from GCI Turf, he's a Ventrac lover, well, like me, but he now has a need for something a little bit larger and we're gonna try to help. Let's get started. Now, Pete, we're, yep. we're looking at the green stuff to, to start with here, gotcha. right? I mean, we're going we're gonna to try to look at another brand later, but the reason that we're looking at the green stuff is because the folks here at Danville, yep. James River Equipment, have yep. been very kind to try to get these machines together. Supply chain, there's just no tractors hardly available. Mm -hmm. These guys had tractors brought in from who knows where. They have quite a few out here. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. And so what I'd like to do first is to try to help you figure out what size mm -hmm. and maybe some of the general options, right? So right. I'd like to try to, at least on, on this first pass here, you know, you got frame size differences, you got horsepower differences, but we've also got like transmission differences, mm -hmm. open station versus cab. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that'd be the kind of the place to start. So sure. we're not really focusing on brand for this particular first part. Mm -hmm. It's more about what features and what size. And the only reason we're doing it here with John Deere is because, well, that's what I'm familiar with. Right. And because the folks here at James River Equipment have been so kind to, to gather yeah. all these machines yeah. for us. Pete and I know each other because of our shared love for Ventrac. Oh, yeah. But it won't do some of this bigger stuff. Exactly. So on that topic, what do you want to do? Athletic field work. Soccer fields, baseball fields, mainly predominantly high school in our area. We've really gotten into that big time. For a small business, I call big time. Manage about 20 fields now. Next year, we actually have an opportunity to bid on all of the fields in our county, which, which would be another 30 fields probably on top of what I'm doing. Soccer, baseball, softball. Do you mow them? No, I don't, mow, I don't actually mow the turf, although okay. we, we've got some quotes out to real mower it with a real mower. And of course, that'd be my Ventrac reel because that would be the most efficient for what I have. But mainly the fertilizer weed control, keeping the Bermuda tight, looking good, weed free, growing, healthy, thick, leveling type work, okay. like sand leveling. When you would put sand actually on the turf, and use a large, wide, plain leveler and drag that sand around and it, it fills in the low spots. And then the Bermuda grows right back up through it. So you get a nice safe, that's the main objective of that, is a safe playing field for the kids. Okay. And not to mention it's way easier mowing. Okay, so you mentioned Bermuda, Bermuda grass. I can't even say it. I have no knowledge of how Bermuda grass Tell me. W warm, warm season turf. Typically, okay. it's going to be like transition zone south. Okay. And it is a, a compact turf. Uh, a lot of the, the newer, nicer varieties have a thin, narrow, soft leaf blade, which a lot of folks like. And it will grow by rhizome and stolen. Uh, one grows runners on top of the ground. One goes, grows runners under the ground. You can cut that and verticut it and, and make it thick enough and, and fill in and grow more Verticut. What's Ver a What's a verticut? Vertical cutting. Okay. Instead of a traditional mower blade, yeah. cutting in a rotary perpendicular to the ground. Yeah. Is that the right word? I think that would be parallel. Parallel to the ground. Whatever it is, it's parallel. It's not a geometry class, guys. Don't worry it's, about yeah, it. Yeah, I failed geometry. <laughs> <laughs> so it cuts down into the ground. How deep does it go? Uh, you can go... You can vary. You can, I, guess, I guess you could go up to a couple of inches deep if okay. you wanted to. For me personally, it's probably the most horticultural uh, thing, best thing you can do to Bermuda turf without adding fertilizer. Is cutting it. It's cutting it vertically, and it will absolutely take off. Okay, so this requires, I think you said, verta cutter. A verta cutter, which is a attachment that would go behind the tractor hook up to the, the PTO. And the three-point hitch. That, that's the limit I have with my Ventrac because I just don't have a PTO don't have a back rear there. PTO. It's just not there. And probably not enough horsepower. More than likely not because it takes a, a pretty good size machine because you're talking about a 60-inch row of disc that are going to be buried in the ground and they're all turning at one time. Now, we saw a, a spec of this online uh, from First Products 
uh, is the name of the company mm -hmm. that makes mm -hmm. this the, yeah. one of the more popular verticals. They're, they're absolutely ex exceptional. And what we see in this spec is it's fairly heavy. It's not it's not outside the range of these machines, but it's uh, it's also requires a good bit of horsepower. The one that we saw for a five footer, I believe, is 25 to 45 horsepower. We should be able to find something in that range. Yeah. What other attachment do you think we need? Deep tine aeration. Okay, so this is not a core aerator. Not like a core aerator. A deep tine core aeration is where you, the tines may be as big around as your pinky, or maybe a slightly bigger, and you can get them hollow or solid, but they'll go up to 12 inches deep. Okay. 12 inches down in the ground. You see them used on golf greens a whole lot, where okay. they're, they're, aer they're aer aerating the golf green. And then that just really opens up the ground, lets air and oxygen, and if, if you're applying fertilizer, getting the nutrients down in the root zone where it needs. Okay, who makes these? Toro is a, obviously a big player in that. Okay. But, uh, there's, there's multiple options. And again, they're PTO driven. PTO driven, and again, it takes a lot of horsepower. You're talking 48 to 60 inches wide, a, a row of tines, and they're all working in unison, penetrating the ground. So you got to power. Now I assume to do we're going to move really slowly when we're operating one of these. Very slow. Uh, I think maybe two, three mile an hour. It, uh, that probably most. not even that fast. Yeah. I think one of them said 0.8 mile yeah, per some, hour. Yeah, some some of it's creeping. Well, with that thought in mind, let's dig into some of these tractors. Hey, don't forget about the bucket. You need I, a bucket? I need a bucket, man. A big bucket for sand. Because a lot of times we'll bring this sand in by the tracks we'll load, dumping in the parking lot because you don't want to drive on the field with the truck. I made that mistake once. I'll never do it never again. Never do it again. Ever you have to repair again. that for months probably. And so I need a really big bucket to either load a top dresser, which may be in the future, or just to, to transfer large amounts of sand from the parking lot out to the field before I level it out. Okay, right now you're using the, what is it called, the power bucket? Power bucket on the Ventrack. On the Ventrack, and it's only four feet wide. Yeah. It's, it's in, incredibly effective. It's incredible for what it is, but speed and time is money in what I do. Okay. So, okay, with those thoughts in mind, we've got heavy PTO usage, we've got a good bit of three-point lift capacity needed, and we need a good-sized bucket. And it's hot. We get hot here. Are you telling me you're soft like I, me? I'm getting softer. <laughs> <laughs> Summertime, we can get really nasty here. Super humid, really hot. I mean, I'm just, I ain't going to lie. I'd love to have an air-conditioned cab. This makes it pretty easy, right? As a salesperson, you come along. Pete has already listed exactly what he wants to do with this tractor, listed amenities that he'd like to have. How, how could it get any easier? I think even I can sell you a tractor, Pete. Mm -hmm. Especially if it's got a radio in there. <laughs> We got radios. This is Matt, by the way, from James River Equipment. Now, Matt, you know I love my 1025R. Sure, who doesn't? But I'm not sure that that's gonna be enough for Pete. What do you think? Probably not. If you're moving a bunch of sand and trying to do a lot of rotary work, you're gonna need a little more horsepower and a little more weight and a little more width. Yeah, I don't know. I can try to make Johnny do a lot of stuff. Well, I always tell customers, a tractor does the same job no matter whether it's big or small. It just does it in smaller chunks. Okay, I think that's a good way to look at it. I think that's a good way to look at it for sure. I'm not even sure they make a small enough verticutter for one of these. As much as I'd love to push a 1025R toward Pete, I think we better look a little bigger. I think so too. We've got three frame sizes here. Now, Deer works a little different than some of the other manufacturers and the same as some other manufacturers yet. So. When you're looking at different manufacturers, you kind of have to realize just what their philosophy is on the different sizes of tractors. In Deere's case, they put a lot of horsepower tractors in the same frame sizes. Okay. So they have a, a, you know, just a few distinct frame sizes. All the horsepower ratings within that frame size are very, very similar. In the three R's, for instance, they look identical. You cannot tell from the outside whether you're dealing with a 33 horsepower, a 39, or a 46. Yeah, because you can't see under the hood. Yeah, and here. the hydraulic systems are the same, the transmissions are the same, seating, everything is the same except for the horsepower. Now the horsepower really only matters for PTO applications, yeah. which you need, right? Yep. You, you've got heavy PTO needs. So I would suggest no matter which frame size we end up choosing that you go with the highest horsepower class in that frame size. And, and I am an overkill guy 
if there ever was a one. You so. know, there's a lot of people that say bigger is always better in the tractor world. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you hear, oh, just go big, go big, go big. I get that. I fully get that because a lot of times you feel like you're underpowered a little bit. Yeah. But having started with the 1025R, the one series, right? These are three, four, and five. Starting with the one series, I really have grown to love the maneuverability of the smaller ones. Yeah. So to me, I want to get, I want to get kind of the smallest that will do the job well. I mean, I don't want the machine to struggle with oh, the yeah. job. Well, that, that's kind of what I mean. I'm not saying the biggest tractor I can get, but whatever frame we go with, I definitely want to max the horsepower out. Okay, so let's look at these two. These are the three and the four series, right? The three R, by the way, there is a three E we're not even going to look at because it is essentially identical to the 2R. Okay. Deers kind of made this a little bit confusing. Uh, typically the sales guys will work through this for you, but the, the 3E is much, much smaller than the 3R. So the 3R is the smallest machine I would, I would recommend for you. Okay. And this is the 4 Series. So the 4Ms and 4Rs, uh, the M is sort of halfway between E and R, right, as far as feature level. But their frame sizes and their capabilities are very similar between the M and the R. Okay. The M's are not available with the cab, so if you're wanting the cab, you're going to have to go with the R. It's R. Yeah. Now, yep. I realize you're wanting the cab, but again, supply chains, we don't have everything. James River did great to get this much done. Oh, yeah. No, I'm impressed. I... But we can still kind of judge the frame sizes uh, and, and, you know, get, get oh, some yeah. help there. Yeah, well, once you sit in one cab, you know, you can kind of imagine what it's going to be like. They're, they're not going to be much difference. All three of these tractors, these first two are rather unique. All three of these have the uh, shuttle shift transmission. Okay, I think they call it a power reverser. Okay. But I'm going to call it a shuttle shift because that's okay. how a lot of the, the industry might know. It has a clutch and you've got 12 speeds. Okay. A four, a four shifter right here, a three shifter right here. So four by three to get 12 speeds. That's a lot different than the old three speed Farm All 140. Yeah, which had fast, faster, and race car. Exactly. Yeah. This is the shuttle right here. Okay, forward, so reverse. forwards, neutral, back, forwards, neutral, So back. is it forwards 12 gears and reverse 12, 12 gears? Wow. This, you choose, your, you choose your speed here. Yeah. And this is just forward in that speed and reverse, at least on the five, 10% faster which is backwards to the way a human would think. But yeah, we'll show you that. Three point hitch capacity here is somewhere just shy of 2,200 pounds. Now what they're measuring is like two foot back here. So if you're more than two foot back, I mean, there's a lot of leverage here, right? Yeah. So, but 2,200 pounds on this one. So maybe, maybe the long, like a bush hog, which would be longer. Of course, you're yeah. not gonna have a 2,000 pound bush hog, but right. I kind of get the idea. The right. further back, the less weight. Yeah, it'll and it really does make a difference. I yeah. mean, you know, if you, uh, you get, you get something right up here close, you can lift a lot with it. Oh, yeah. So this oh, one's yeah. about almost 2,200 pounds, and that one's about 25 or 26. Okay. So 350, 400 pounds difference for okay. between the 3R and the Which four. isn't a whole lot. It's not a, not a huge amount. I think you'll see a little bit more capacity change on the front-end loader. The front-end loader will have uh, more capacity on the uh, 4R than the, the 3. Now, there's one thing about these loaders. The 3R has this 320R loader the bucket does not self-level. So okay. as you raise it, the bucket will tilt backwards, Yep. right? Yep. There's another type of loader, and they have it for the 4R, this one's not, but that will keep the bucket at the same position as it goes up. Yeah, that would probably be a must. Well, people would say that until they get used to it. Yeah, when I, I've ran things, backhoes and things, loaders, you know, large cat, caterpillar style, so I'm very familiar with a bucket, but I'm just thinking in my mind, if I'm just kind of in cruise mode, loading sand, do I really want to, do I want to be lazy? The funny thing is when you're using the bucket, if you put it flat when you're on the ground, yeah. when, as you pick it up, it tilts it back, which is exactly what you want. Well, it's yeah. really for yeah, forks. That's right. yeah. Forks yeah. is when you want it to stay. You want, you want your, your load to stay level. Yeah. Yeah, no, you, that makes and sense. I don't know about the 4R. I don't have the 4R loader, but on the 1 and 2, the small ones, the self-leveling loader does not curl back enough to make it comfortable. So you can't okay. get a really hold a full bucket load. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so there are some disadvantages. That is a big deal because when I when I when I go into a pile of whatever I'm picking up, 
I, I like to maximize the bucket. Yeah. And I like to get as much in that bucket as I can. If it don't curl all the way back, then it's, you, you know, technically you're not going to really be able to get a, a, yeah, a full now bucket. Yeah, now I should make it clear that I don't know how far the 4R curls back. I've got yeah. a, a loader on my 5E, and it does curl back. Even though it's self-leveling, it yeah. does curl back enough. Yeah. So probably a little more research done there. Hey, if you know anything about the 4R loader, does it curl back really well? Le let us know in the comments section. We don't have one here to test. Loaders are, are hard to come by. Yeah. yeah. So, But you could probably get whichever one you want on the 4R. On this one, you can't get a self-leveling loader. Okay. What, what if I want to pick up a pallet of fertilizer that weighs about 2,000 pounds? 2,000 pounds. And how high do you need to pick that up? Uh, about like a flatbed F-350. I think that's going to be probably too big for this. Okay. I think the 4 is probably the, the minimum for that. Now, with the 4, I think you're going to have trouble getting that to full height. Yeah. But I think you'll you'll not have any issue getting yeah. that in a pickup. The reason, reason I ask is even though my main goal is for athletic fields, it's a track I can do a lot of different things with it. So I'm trying to get ideas about all of that. It's hard to think about everything at one time, isn't it? Yeah. I got one of these at home. Really? Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. And it comes, it's got a loader as well. Okay. okay. Now when you get to the loader here, it's a, a totally different beast. The loader for this tractor is probably a little oversized for this tractor. Okay. I mean, even even deer would probably say, "Ooh, that's yeah, that's the one we that's the one we put on it." But okay. it, but I can flatten those tires oh, wow. with the loader. Oh. Okay, even with thirty pounds on the tires, thirty five pounds, okay. I can. I mean, it's an amazing loader. It'll do well over three thousand pounds to full height. Mm -hmm. And I've got the self leveling loader, and and it will, uh, you know, it'll it'll just lift an enormous amount. Do you have a grappler? I have a grapple for that it. That would probably really come in handy because you can pick up like really big trees. Yeah, yeah, you can pick up more than I've never I've never tested it on capacity. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Any real world. Now, the negative is it's a little harder to see your loader. Okay. Because the hood's bigger. Yeah. You got a bigger tractor overall, yeah. right? As you get bigger in these machines, the visibility declines mm -hmm. a little bit, and mm -hmm. overall the handiness declines a little bit, yeah. right? Because yeah. you know you're, exactly. you can't turn as short. Bigger. Yeah. Uh, now this machine, the cab in it is huge. Yeah, I, I, I saw that. Pop That's, up in um, there. I'd be glad to. <laughs> oh boy, look at this. Now this one is only offered with the power reverser or the shuttle shift. It doesn't offer a uh, hydrostatic transmission. I don't care at this point. I like to Fire the cab. it up, drive it around, man. <laughs> now I, I like the way the, the, the gears are really tight. Really now this is really neat because those four, the four speeds are synchronized. Okay. So you can clutch and shift while you're moving as long as you clutch. Yeah. It can be rolling. The A, B, and C, you essentially have to be stopped. I mean, Stop. it, yeah. it just grinds. It's not synchronized at all. Okay. This was probably a mistake, having him drive the biggest one first. Man, this is nice. <laughs> Gosh, it's big, too. I can see right now this will spoil you. Oh my goodness, you! There's so much space in here. Yes, yes, yes. This now, this is huge. This is a huge cab. You can even get a buddy seat in it now. Really, jacks can sit. Jacks right can sit right there with you. Both of these, by the way, have the same transmission style as that. Okay. Uh, now, now, when we were talking last night, that's what I prefer. Oh. No, I don't think so. I think I've got something else to show you. Well, in a I'm, I'm talking about the forward and reverse lever. The, I think you'll okay. like something else just okay. as good. Okay, okay. That clutch is tight. Look how tight that thing turns. That's really cool. Go out there and turn a tight circle with it. Keep turning. Hey, you don't mind this grass, do you? Worst case, you have to come back and fix it for him. I can do that. Watch your toe. Pete can fix that grass. Whoa, look at that. Look what you did. Come on, man. That's Bermuda, it'll grow back. <laughs> this thing turns incredibly tight. You ain't seen nothing yet. Really? Try, try your loader to see how high it goes. Now, notice how the bucket goes back as you go up. You'll have to push outward a little bit while you're going. Yeah. See, but you can do that. That's easy enough, right? Oh, yeah. 
Now, one thing I do like. It'll go higher. It'll go higher? Oh, gosh, it does. Look at that. Yeah, that would easily load one of our dump trucks. Yeah. Like a standard F-350 dump truck. Easily. Yeah. No problem. And I think we may ought to compare that with a three. We may find that a three is not is not tall enough for you. Yeah. Can you get hydraulic top link for these? Yes. Okay. Cool. Just good to know. Don't okay. don't tell James River, but I have a supplier for that. Okay. Cool. That that I think it's code TTWT. That uh, implement that I pull around at levels. Yeah. It actually works way better if you have the ability to pitch it. A bit. So one thing we have we, we need to do from the factory on that is we need to make sure we order ex all the rear hydraulics we can get yeah. on these tractors. So whatever okay. size, we'll have to order extra rear gotcha. hydraulics. Chances are, if, if I do go this route, when, when I order one, I can get it loaded with every hydraulic feature I can possibly get because I don't know what I might need in the future. That's and right. It's been my experience. It's cheaper, quicker to just get it done at the factory and be done with it. Whether it's at the factory or the dealer, there is something unique about the way these things work. Typically, when you negotiate with your dealer, you can negotiate a discount on the entire package. Mm -hmm. If you buy things like additional hydraulics after the sale, you're, you're buying them price. as parts and you yeah. pay full price. Mm -hmm. so, yep. so you end up with the ability to negotiate a little bit more if you buy things like that yeah. at, with your initial purchase. Mm -hmm. Same with the loader, same with the backhoe. But, uh, and we might talk about that in a minute, but uh, hey, let, let's drive this three series. Okay. This tractor is available with an air seat, either the three or the four are available okay. with an air seat. And I highly recommend it. This is a three cylinder. The, this one over here is a four cylinder. Sounds a little different. You may notice this one doesn't have a lot of power when you're doing stuff. Don't worry about it. The more horsepower version, which is the one you would get. Yeah. Would be more. Yeah, that don't go quite as high. Right. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's height. That that would really come in handy if you're loading a truck or loading something in a tight spot. Yeah. That thing really turns on a dime. Now I noticed you applied the brake. Yeah. And each time you applied the brake, the rear wheel would skid. Yeah. The rear end on these tractors are fairly light. Actually, they're really light, right? Mm -hmm. so you've got to have a lot of weight on these tractors when you run the front end loader. Okay. Okay. So no matter which of these machines you get, three, four, five, one series, two series, all of these compact tractors, you need to have a lot of rear ballast. Okay. Okay. It can be an attachment. To, to offset. To offset. And for those of you who are not familiar with the steering brakes or the uh, individual rear brakes, you can lock up one of the rear wheels and it's supposed to kind of drag the front wheels around a little bit to make you turn shorter. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't really work that way when you don't have any rear ballast and you do have the loader because you've got all these weight on the front wheels. The tractor's kind of pushing and the tire sliding instead yeah. of actually biting and turning. Yeah. yeah. And so it, it, if you don't have the loader on or if you have a really heavy three-point attachment on, mm -hmm. uh, you'll, you'll feel that brake do more effectiveness okay. for you. But the biggest thing is a safety issue. You've got to have it loaded with rear ballast. Oh yeah. So okay. you also, in my opinion, you'll want some uh, fluid in the tires. Yeah. We keep, use rim guard. back heavy. Yeah, we use 11 pound per gallon rim guard okay. in the back of our tires up north. You might be able to get by with water here. Probably so. Uh, yeah. But uh, on, on those coldest days, it's kind of a rough ride. Yeah. Until it gets warmed up. That's right. No, if, you, if it happens to freeze in there. Yeah. Rim guard doesn't freeze to like minus 25 or okay. minus 35 okay. or something. See. Now, here's a question. If I don't want an attachment, let's say if I'm, I'm working in an area where I don't want necessarily a full-blown attachment on the back and using the loader, do they make a weight kit? They I do. I can hook up to the three-point. They do. The least expensive thing is called a ballast box. And they'll, they'll sell you one. Deer yeah. will sell you one. It's fairly cheap and it comes empty. Okay. Right. So you can either fill it with rock or you can, if you want it permanent, you can pour concrete in it. Oh, okay. I, I don't know. I mean, to me, that makes it harder to ship or whatever if yeah. you want to do it again. But yeah. if, if you fill it with something, you can dump out of it. Probably sandbags. Sandbags probably or just good. loose sand even, you yeah. know, I mean, would, would be a good choice. You can put pipe down in them before you fill them to, yeah. to be able to hold uh, shovels and, okay. and rakes and stuff in, yeah. in them while you're going. Um, then there are some weight brackets. We use uh, heavy hitch weight brackets where you can put 
cast iron weights back there. Okay. And then that gives you a two inch receiver. Uh, it gives you some more flexibility. It's a little more compact than a ballast box. In today's world of high steel prices, it costs a good bit more yeah. uh, to do that, but it provides some more flexibility. Those same weights can be used on the front, right, of the yeah. tractor if you okay. ever need that without the loader. I want to show you the different transmission type. Okay. Okay. So far, what we've looked at has been the shuttle shift, the power reverser. Yeah. I want to show you the hydrostatic transmission. So this tractor, it's it's got the cab. It's also got a hydrostatic transmission. Okay. Okay. So it it, it drives very simply. You got uh, on your left hand side, you've got a forward pedal and a reverse pedal. Okay. And that's all you have to do. That's it. Okay. There are no three, different gears. Or anything? There are three gears: A, B, and C. Okay. 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 Uh, you know, low, medium, and high. Okay. Um, I think it's in B, uh, okay. which is fine for, for out here in the yard. Um, it'll go about 20 miles per hour. I mean, that's, that's moving pretty good with a cab track. It's, it's you know? moving fast enough that uh, you, can, you don't have to trailer it for every, yeah. every situation, right? Hmm. You can actually drive it around some. Oh, yeah, you found something I'm there. Nosy. What is, so I assume this helps you hook up? Yes. The three point? Yes, this lets you creep the tractor backwards Dude, and forwards. That from is back so here. awesome. Yeah. So you don't have to get back here and grab the implement and uh, jerk well, it. Well, you can and, if you want to feel, you know. No, no, I'm trying to get away from that. Well, then this you is know. your answer. Oh my gosh, I love that. that yeah, is so that's cool. only available on the four while this is forward and back, right? And it's real slow. Yeah. Okay. Then there's a lever right over here that lets you raise and lower the three okay. point lift arm. So you can okay. do all this from the rear. That is so cool. Especially if you have a big, bigger implement, and you yeah, just, you can't push these and big you're by implements. yourself, and you can't get the track to situated just right, and you don't want to grab that thing. It keeps and, you from temptation too to say words that you shouldn't be saying. True, I agree with that. Yeah. So hey, let's Pain get in. the tongue. <laughs> no clutch. Oh, no clutch. The brakes are on this side, which is odd, I realize, but there's a reason for that. That's because the hydrostat pedals are on the right. All right, so I just I'm this ready is your to go. A, B, and C, and you're ready to go. You're not gonna like me. Why? I think I like the other one better. You think you like the shuttle shift better? I think I do. I, I think there's a reason behind it. I used to work for DOT, and I, I ran nothing but large equipment, and the majority of that is shuttle shift. We have forward reverse clutch. I think I'm just so used to it. Now, I'm not saying I couldn't grow to love this, but I think it's just, not what I'm used to. Maybe that's I can a, believe a good that. Word. I can believe that. I, I would strongly encourage you with strong with large PTO applications. Mm -hmm. I would strongly encourage you okay. to think. Well, for instance, why don't you take a trip down through here and uh, put the put throttle all the way up? Okay. And force yourself to go consistently 0.5 miles per hour, and then consistently one mile per hour, and then back. You see what I'm saying? I see where you're going. I see where you're going. Do, do, play with that a little bit, but put the throttle all the way up because that's how you have to run it with the PTO, right? Yep, exactly. Now, as a salesperson, you're supposed to say, well, whatever the customer says he wants, you should never try to change that, right? But I really think Pete would do better with a hydrostatic transmission for his needs, running those PTO-powered Berta Cutter, and uh, he'll probably have a mower on it too. Uh, so you're running really slow like that with your attachment. Yeah. Now, when you get to the end, you want to turn. Right. If you were in a slow gear, how fast do you turn? Okay. Mm, so, I see where you go. So, going so take me yeah. a, take me a little bit straight here, running okay. your attachment. Okay. And then whip it around. Lift it up, turn it out. Is there such thing as a cruise control for this? There is. Yeah. I it's over there in those buttons. I don't use it myself, and most people that I've talked to don't, because you end up enjoying that variety of yeah of speed. I, I was just. You can also set so that uh, the max speed it will go when you press the pedal. 
Oh, that's nice. So that you press yeah. the pedal all the way down and hold it. And it only goes a certain speed. It only goes a certain speed. All right, we're at one and let's get up to like 1.3 mile an hour. And now I'm coming at the end of a run. I'm picking up my attachment. Yeah, I can speed up a little bit. Tim, I kind of see what you're saying, bud. That is nice. Then you go right back into your 1.2 mile an hour. Huh. Tim might be right with this one. Attachment up. Quick turnaround. <clears throat> and you've still got the ability to go backwards, right? I mean, really quick too. I think you're right. That's a neat. And it actually plays into exactly what I do. It plays into exactly what you do yeah. in, in a couple of ways from the, from, the, from the changes of speed. But the best part of a hydrostatic transmission is loader work and PTO work, mm -hmm. right? The worst part of a hydrostatic transmission, if you want to get into the negatives of it, it is ground engaging, hard pulling attachments like a plow, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I'm not going to be plowing up here. Right. If, if you plow up one of your ball fields, I don't think that's... That's not going to go over well. Not a good idea. So that's typically why you would want the, the geared transmission mm -hmm. or the shuttle shift is when you're pulling hard. Even a box blade or something. But I still like to have the, the hydrostat. And you still have a lot of power with it. It's oh, just yeah. not as yeah. much. Yeah. I think I like that size the most. With, with From everything that, I've heard, that's what yeah, I think Yeah. I think with, I'm without, without digging into paper, nitty-gritty details, just feel, I think that the 44 series yeah i like that one i think from a size standpoint you pretty well decided mm -hmm. and i think from an equipment standpoint you pretty well decided i think you want a cab yep uh you want the largest horsepower you can get in this four series the five's too big yep you don't want a backhoe right now yeah not necessarily no yeah i think i think that's a, a wise decision you want the hydrostatic transmission i believe so i think that is a wise especially decision. after you showing me that uh, turnaround and you know having to change gears to speed up and all, that'd be a headache. I think in the long run you'd be happier there. So I think we've accomplished our goal for this episode and uh, I, I, hope, I hope you guys have enjoyed it. In our next episode, we're gonna actually try to begin uh, choosing which brand we might want, right? And uh, we'll have more discussion on that at that time and we'll try to find a competitive brand We'll have to look at the numbers. Yeah, yeah. That, we'll have that, to look at finances play, that, too. That comes into play as well. You know. Yeah. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. Stick around for our next episode. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of, because you know those from whom you learned it, and how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Which way you want? I don't care. Okay. Want to wrestle? No. I just eat breakfast. Let well, it's it, a good time. I might have a chance. Let it settle and we'll, we'll go for it. No, I won't be ready then. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't want to catch you in your optimal situation. I want you when you're like... When I'm weak and frail and... Yeah. And, and, and That's and the it, only way I'll yeah. have it. You remember, I'm an old man.